Hello there and welcome back. So let's carry on the saga of the Tektronix 585A analog digital uh, analog scope. I think in the last video we got as far as we'd found out the problem was the mains transformer. Now I'm going to try and uh, in this next video we're going to power it up and we're going to try and find the fault that originally caused the mains fuse to blow and hopefully get it working again. First I tried to power it up using my big variable current limited power supply. However, that it just poof crashed because I don't think the output is floating. So now what I'm using, I'm using my Variac and isolation transformer to replace the 140 volt winding. I'm going to troubleshoot the scope using, as I said, my Variac and uh, isolation transformer. So, at the moment, everything is working. I've checked all the. Uh, right, let's let's go through the test procedure. So we powered it up. First thing to do is check all the voltages are there on the low voltage power supply. And so if you look here, this is the underneath of the scope. This is why it's upside down. Let me just check my notes. And it's always a good idea to take copious notes when you're doing this sort of thing because it's easy to forget what you've done. So we've got plus 500 volts here. We've got plus 350 volts here. We've got plus 225 volts here. We've got plus 100 volts here. And this last one, which is really important because this is what all the other... Um, rails are referenced to is a minus 150 volt rail they're all okay all the voltages were in spec also what I've just done is to take uh, set the meter to AC and check what the ripple is on each of these winding uh, each of these voltage each of these rails sorry it's really hard to um, narrate and articulate what you're trying to get at because it's a lot of ins and outs they're all okay they check out so we know that all the power supplies are cushy right you all then we'll start it up start the scope up so we can show you what the crack is got the voltage over there for the spur winding start it up yeah, a bit noisy as well, big fan in it. Takes about a minute, there's a de delay circuit coming uh, that has to click in after about a minute. So what was happening before when I was trying to troubleshoot this scope was that wait, delay will kick in, bang, click off again. Went through about a hundred fuses. There we go. So, I've got this trace come up there and it's just disappeared then it comes back up right as you can see I'm putting you properly we're not right are we there the uh, one particular what is that time base eh? not sure can't tell which base is what anyway they're wrong and as you can see they're just in the Right, I'm adjusting the horizontal deflection, um, horizontal thingy there. That's not right, is it? That should just move it like that. Anyway, so this is our delayed time base circuit here. And we've got two neons there. As you can see, one is lit, and the other isn't. We've got a couple of neons there doing a similar function they're both lit and basically those neons there are just as regulator tubes like this one here this tube here or valve uh, V609 is what is regulating all the power supplies so this regulates the negative 
150 volts power supply and everything else sort of uses that as a reference that tube that valve so we're going to kick that off and sorry I've got to do this but my printer isn't working I've got about three printers and none of the buggers are working so hopefully you can see that this is our uh, um, time based circuit part of it uh, so the manual tells you to look at this resistor here R173 that's okay that's within spec right okie dokie now you can see these two neons in question I've established that it is this one I've taken it out of the circuit applied AC across it and it's okay so the actual neon is okay right I haven't really a scooby doo how the hell this circuit works Miller run up circuit right some sort of Miller time base using the capacitance of the valves but basically I would think we're, we're trying to um, have a, a, a sawtooth waveform coming out here. Right, so uh, 140 on. <sighs> I've got it marked here what we should be on. I've got a probe set to times 10 and I have marked out where I've got a probe here because there's nothing worse than trying to find a point you know when we're uh, there is nothing worse trying to find a uh, test point when you're in the middle of testing it says in the manual we should be having a waveform of a 100 volt peak to peak I think well that's one day if we're on 10 times 10 100 volt peak to peak that's about right isn't it okay and we should have another one on pin 193 here yeah it's the same waveform we've got a sawtooth there that's what we should have on V183 cathodes which is down there and if we follow that back it comes to here and that is about 100 volts peak to peak a little bit less so what does that tell us I'm just going to turn everything off So that tells us everything seems to be operating correctly. So what about DC conditions? That's what I usually check. We're going to have to check DC conditions. Now I could really do with getting the printer fixed, save running in and out of the bloody living room all the time. This is still not lighting. Why? I did check the voltages across there. But I uh, couldn't see. I've checked these resistors that you see underneath there. They're cushy. Oh, one thing we didn't, yeah, we changed V173. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. More later. I'll, I'll have to have a think. More later.